welcome to another video. In this video, I will give you an overview of all the custom variables that are available. But first, I'm going to explain to you what's the difference between a global and a local variable and when to use one or the other. So let's get started. What I'm going to do is show you this in two pages. So I've got page one here and page two here. And you'll understand as I go on why I have these two. So your variables are under the gear icon, tools, and your custom variables. Now, this one here are variables that are available all across the pages. So if you have 20 page portal, 30 page portal, any variables that you set here are available on all those pages to be used. And then what you've got is you've got what we call page level variables. So the page level variables, if you click on the pages, for example, this is page two, you've got variables available here, and these are page variables. And you've got different ones, really. You've got system, you've got static, numeric, string. I'll come on to these in a second. When to use which one. So let's go to page home. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the gear icon, go over to the tools, custom variables, and I'm just going to set up a static variable. And I'm going to call this one account ID. Actually, we'll call it global account ID, something like that. And I'm just going to fetch account ID value here and just pop it in there like a static value. All right, and I'm going to leave this as it is. When I click on this button, it takes me to the next page, essentially. All right, and then save and continue, and I want to go over to page two. Now on page two, I'm going to drag a table. So let's drag a table, and that table is going to bring back contact. Actually, sorry, before I do that, I'm going to set up a local variable. So we go over to the page, click on the icon here, configure actions, and again, I'm going to set up a static one, and I'm going to call this PG2 account ID. So this is my local variable, all right, and I'm going to keep it empty for now. Click save, click save, and then now we're going to drag a table. So table, uh, I'm going to bring back all contacts, where account ID must equal my page uh, PG2 account ID. So this is the local variable here on this page that we just set up literally two seconds ago. So here we go. We're going to bring back full name, we're going to bring back email, and then we're going to account ID and reference to account name like this. Click apply, apply, and like that. Now here's what's going to happen. Let's bring that over here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a button, and this is going to be my secondary button. This is what I'm going to use to actually trigger this table. And I'm going to do some cool stuff here so you'll get to see why I'm doing it. So let's say this button is going to trigger my get, execute get. Okay, what's going to happen is this. So remember, I've got a global parameter, right? So what we'll do is we we'll go over here and set the Salesforce action to be a user action like this. And then what I'm going to do is simply go over here and say on click action, go ahead and run my get which is the table get. And then here's what I'm going to do. This is the really important part. This page to parameter on this page, I want to say set value from my global parameter. Okay. And that's what I'm going to do. So I click apply, apply, save. And then let me show you how this works. And I'm going to explain the difference between a global and a local parameter. So let's say I publish this. I go into it. And I'm going to show you the debug here. So the debug, so remember, this is a global parameter. It's available on any page. Now, if I go to the next page and I click on uh, debug mode here, you can see that, you know, it's, it's really nothing here in this parameter, even though this is loaded. And I'm going to correct that right now because what I want it to do is set a condition. So we'll go to Salesforce here and we'll say 
run criteria when page two param is not empty. All right, that's my only criteria now. So back on to, let's click save, and let's publish again. So we'll let it load, and you know, I want to get this actually on a preview, so I can show you the preview here. Right, so here's a preview mode, and in our debug, this is a global parameter with the static account ID. If I go next here, all right, nothing's running because remember what we said, we want to run it based off this. Now, what's going to happen is when I click on this execute get here, this value is going to get passed into here, and then it's going to run. So if I do this, you can see here it is, all right? And then if I go into the debug, you can see this value has been passed into the local parameter. Now, what is the difference, really? Because technically, I'll pass the same value in here. So what's the difference? Well, here's the difference. Let's say if I go back, and then I come back into this page again, what you'll find is that there is no value, all right? So what happens is that the local parameter will disappear when you go, when you transition one, one page and back to it. So if you go page to page, the local parameter will disappear, all right? Whereas the global parameter will always remain as is. And then if I now click get again, you can see that parameter has been passed. So this is something you should be very mindful of, that when you set up local parameters, they will reset when you transition from one page to another, whereas the global will remain uh, available throughout all the pages. That's the difference between global and the local uh, custom variables. Now, what sort of different variables are available to you? Now, the, you, both have the, uh, you have both of them available the same way. So custom variables, you can set up a system one. So here you can choose a bunch of system values, current hour, all sorts available in here. Uh, you can set up a numeric, so this is where we only accept numeric value. So you can set up numeric ones in here, and then what you can do is once you've set it, you can pass the new value to a new field that you set up. So that's numeric. You can set up a string. So for example, you can say, I have opportunity, I have accounts and contacts, and account ID is... And then here you can just simply pass something like a string, which is now over here, and then you can map to a new field, all right? So all of this will then get passed onto a new field. You can even do custom JavaScript. So if you have um, if you know a bit of JavaScript, you can do that here and then return the value to another field. So you can choose a bunch of fields here, run your JavaScript script in here. And same thing here. So that's literally the custom variables for you. And I said, you can do that globally, which is done through here. But if you want to do page level, you can also do that as well by clicking on the page, gear icon, configure actions, and different um, variables that are available with the same premise like I explained a minute ago. So that's um, custom variables for you in Titan Web.